Hello everybody, and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conagher, and I'm building a Kit Fox Model 7 STI. In this short instructional video, I'm going to be taking you through the mixing up of Loctite's 9460EA, otherwise known in the industry as Hysol. So, what is it? That's a good question. Well, it's a gray, two-part, thixotropic, modified epoxy adhesive formulated for ease of use and good balance of its properties. It gives very high peel strength and excellent shear strength. Its flexibility makes it useful for bonding to similar substrates. Recommended substrates include metals, engineering thermoplastics, and thermoset laminates such as sheet molding compound. So some good characteristics of the Hysol. It's a smooth paste. It's good, non-sagging, slump resistant. It's easy to mix and dispense. It's resistant to automotive fluids, or hopefully in this case, aviation fluids. Quick heat response, extended working life. It's impact resistant, it's fatigue resistant, and primers are not required. So when you're applying this to your powder coated uh, parts on the airplane, it's a good idea to first scuff that area with those small scotch brake pads, which you're going to see me do in some of my videos. And then you follow that up quickly with some denatured alcohol. You can just put the denatured alcohol right on a rag and wipe it off. And that's going to remove some of the powder that you, basically the paint that you, uh, that you scuffed off. And the scuffing with the scotch brite is going to leave some little tiny teeth that the epoxy can actually adhere to. So those are good practices. Um, in this video, I did not use uh, the cotton flocks that comes with the kit because it's my understanding that it is going to use It's going to be used more as a thickener So if you're working and it's 95 degrees outside and you mix up some Hysol and it's very runny Well, you're going to want to add a little bit of flocks to it. So it's a small little tub of powdered cotton So number one, you don't want to inhale it, which I don't think you'll have any problems not doing but uh, There's a warning on there. Don't inhale it so you're just gonna, I just take the end of a popsicle stick, drop it in there, stir it in thoroughly, and then check the viscosity. So if it's still runny, add a little bit more. You wanna probably stay relatively proportionate. You don't wanna have a ton of flocks in there. So if it's to the, maybe it's too hot and you keep adding flocks and it's not getting thicker, I would probably either one wait till it cools down or if you can take your piece that you need to epoxy into a climate control area, and do that, I would probably do that. Otherwise, you just add a little bit in, mix it in, and you should notice a significant change in the thickness of your of your epoxy. So, again, not demonstrated in this video, but I'm just demonstrating in this video the actual mixing up two parts, so, well, one part of one, one part of the other, stir it, and pretty much you're ready to go. So, let's get into the video. All right, we're gonna mix up a little Hysol. I haven't done a video on this before, and I should have. I watched a video on Spectre Fox did it, and I was thankful that he'd, he had done it because I didn't know how to do it, and there really were no instructions on how to do it. So for the Hysol in 9460, you need uh, one part of each, and you weigh it out one part of each, so I usually use grams. You need a glass, and today, since I'm attaching my end caps for my horizontal stabilizer, I'm going to be using this little brush to apply it with instead of a syringe, which sometimes people use syringes or sometimes they put it in a baggie, cut the corner off and squeeze it out like you're decorating a cake. And then if you're attaching things uh, structurally, like when I attached the ribs, I added a little cotton flocks to that. But since I'm adhering foam to metal today, I'm not going to put any flocks in there because I don't think it's the... The high saw is going to be much stronger, so if anything hits the foam blocks, the foam is going to be dented or damaged there. Super brittle. I don't know if you can hear it. But just rubbing it like that, it comes off on your fingers, so it's not hard to take those down from the block form. So I'm going to start with uh, the hardener. doesn't matter which one you start with, I don't think. As long as you do equal parts, turn on my scale. So weigh up the cup push the tear button, tear it out, zero. So I get a couple of uh, popsicle sticks and I'm just gonna mix up a little tiny bit today because it's because I'm not doing much and I have a tendency to mix up way too much anyway. This is the thickest one. I'm just gonna scrape it down into the cup. Let's see what we got. We have one, two grams. 
I think that's gonna be enough. So I'm gonna scrape the rest of this off on the top of the cup, and then as I add in the other stuff, I'll drag that down inside. Oh, one gram. Let's make sure it's two. Three grams now. Okay, you can see that I have a super accurate scale. So I'll set this one aside. Grab the resin, and the resin's a little, little easier running, although it's 55 out here right now, so I have to turn the heat up to get that, uh, to get it a little thinner and let it, let it sit better. Otherwise, below 60 degrees, it takes longer for it to, to get hard. Oh, 10 grams, eight. Okay, I'm gonna add two more grams of the hardener. There, 10. Close it up and then mix. So I've got it mixed up now and it be able to see there's no black and there's no white it's just a gray and it's very very thick so it runs very slow I got the heater cranking now trying to get it up to a 70 75 in the, in the garage here so I can hopefully paint it on with this brush as I'm just going to apply it to the end caps of the horizontal stabilizer I hope you liked what you saw if you did Hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell for future videos. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.